Go. Okay, hi everybody. Um, my name is Eunice. So today I'll be presenting on a case study which is um, on suprascapular nerve entrapment. So, uh, fun fact about me. So actually, I graduated from SIT. So um, it's a joint, joint degree between SIT and Trinity College Dublin. And then I started my career in Ng Teng Fong in 2021. So I have the experience in the field of like um, geriatric um, and com horse and also general medicine. And also I became a aesthetic staff in um, outpatient in the muscular skeletal field. And currently, um, oh, then after that, um, recently only this year, I joined um, Heartland Rehab. And I'm currently based in the Orchard Outlet and also under the residency program. So my clinical interest lies in um, low back pain, um, in the elderly and geriatric rehabilitation and also post-op cases. And my personal interest, I actually enjoy doing yoga. Okay, so um, talking about suprascapular nerve entrapment syndrome, so it's actually an often overlooked um, etiology of shoulder pain and weakness. And there are two main um, entrapment sites, which is commonly at the suprascapular notch at the top, and then also at the spinoglinoid notch. So actually it branches from the superior trunk of the brachial plexus at C5, C6, and then it innervates um, both the supraspinatus and also infraspinatus. So there are two main um, injury, which is um, traction lesion. So it can be from um, hypertrophy or even like compression from rotator cuff tears, also or ligament tension or even overusage in those overhead athletes. And it can also be from uh, post-op complications. As for compression injuries wise, um, we have like ganglion cysts, um, vascular abnormalities or malignancies. So here are some of the common clinical presentations. So patients might complain of like dull, aching pain over at the posterior lateral shoulder. And it might even radiate up to the neck or even the arm. They might also have weakness in shoulder abduction and external rotation. And cross-body adduction and internal rotation may also increase the pain uh, by increasing the tension over at the suprascapular ligaments. And actually, almost like 40% of the cases are actually associated with trauma. And it's actually quite common in athletes involved in repeated overhead um, activities. And in severe cases, they might actually note um, atrophy in the supraspinatus and also the infraspinatus. So um, diagnosis was actually the gold standard is um, nerve, con nerve conduction test and also EMG. Um, but they also do um, MRI or CT scan for any masses, x-ray to rout any bone um, fractures and also diagnostic ultrasound. And um, for usually they will also look out for any muscle atrophy um, and any point tenderness. For physio side wise, actually two common special tests that we usually can use is actually the suprascapular nerve stretch test and also the cross body adduction test. So um, it's a brief background on my patient, Miss C. She's a 47-year-old female. And actually, she first attended, she was referred by the auto for left shoulder pain. And she actually did an uh, MRI and shows that she has actually a low-grade partial thickness there of the supraspinatus, um, mild subscap and infraspinatus tendinitis, and also a slap, two, uh, slap type 2 tear, and also mild ACJOA. So she only came to see me only on the 22nd August and um, she's actually a housewife and she attends like Pilates classes and also play tennis. Um, so during subjective history, so under PA, she actually complained of the pain over her uh, anterior, posterior lateral shoulder since June 2024. And she, um, in, in additionally, in terms of like pain, she also complained of like numbness going down the arm, but there was no specific distribution of where the numbness is. And she also, exp uh, apart from the numbness, she also complained of burning pain down the arm. And um, second area, she also mentioned, um, reported pain over the upper trapezius that actually goes up to the neck since post-pregnancy. So she hasn't been able to sleep well for the past six years. Um, on further questioning, actually there's no specific like MRI, no trauma. So she didn't know how she actually got this shoulder pain except that she actually went overseas in June and there was a lot of pulling of the luggage and like lifting her children. So the doctor has actually suggested for like keyhole surgery, but she's actually very keen to trial conservative management. 
So for and her aggravating factors are like shoulder ranging and the numbness actually worsened with the shoulder actions and but she's not able to ident identify the exact movement and sleeping on her left side actually aggravates the shoulder pain and also the burning sensation. As for the upper trap tension, she's not very sure except um, usually when it's sustained um, in one posture. Her easing is usually avoid like overhead action or heavy lifting. For the tension wise uh, PB, she goes for like regular massages and she feels that her Pilates classes actually um, help with her tension. And currently she has attended like four sessions and her shoulder pain, there's actually like a very mild reduction. And she's, she's also trying to limit like backhand swing based on my recommendation. And the numbness and burning pain is actually uh, much decreased with like decrease in intensity and also decrease in the frequency. And her upper traps tension and neck pain has actually improved um, in just four sessions. Um, so initially on my, um, so based on my differential diagnosis, my initial um, thought process was that oh, likely could be a cervical radiculopathy in um, in in addition to her shoulder pain because she complained of like numbness, burning sensation. But we did um, the cluster test, like the spoiling compression. Um, distraction test on the witness cluster was actually negative and actually when we did like further testing there was no neurological deficits um, so my second differential diagnosis I suspected was um, suprascapular nerve entrapment because there was like predisposing factors like her RC tear and then she actually complained like burning pain down like posterior lateral shoulder and there was also weakness in the um, abductors and external rotators uh, furthermore, she engages in tennis and she, she also complains of the burning pain when she sleeps on the left side. Um, so at the back of the mind, also considered on like neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome because same thing, she engaged in tennis, um, there's also pain and numbness, but there was no like blotchy skin, no clammy hands, and um, even on palpation over the supraclavicular space didn't reproduce any of her symptoms. So um, here are some of the objective assessment that I did. So on um, observation, she, um, there was like rounded shoulders, but um, there was no atrophy of her supraspinatus and her infraspinatus. But she was actually quite sensitive, especially on the first session, very irritable. It was like painful and probable trigger points over the supraspinatus in infra. And her teres minor and pec minor was also very tense. And likewise, like even the greater and lesser tuberosity, her bicepital groove, everything was very tender, um, upper traps, all that was also um, has also quite a lot of trigger points. Her range of motion was actually full except at like end of range and her neck range was also full as well except limited by some upper trap tightness and shoulder MMT wise the left side was just slightly weaker compared to the right. Um, in order to, so I wanted to clear the uh, cervical spine so I also did um, a passive accessory movement so there was no, uh, no reproduction of the usual symptoms except that she was actually a little bit stiff over at the cervical thoracic junction. Um, shoulder test actually she was positive um, based on like the tendinitis and her RC tear. And on horizontal adduction, um, she re it reproduced her pain over the ACJ and um, reproduced the burning pain. Uh, spoiling was also negative. Then we did like neurological assessment. Um, all, all that was negative. But I understand that the neurodynamics um, median nerve bias was actually positive because every, and I suspect that there was some like sensitivity over at that area. So um, my clinical impression was like um, rotator cuff related shoulder pain with suprascapular nerve entrapment. So um, how I suspect that was also because she had like rounded shoulders, um, increased thoracic kyphosis, and then sleeping on the left side with the shoulder horizontal adducted and protracted um, compounded by her body we actually further increase her symptoms so they actually like further compress on the nerve and actually compounded by when she was traveling in June there was a lot of pulling of the luggage so that might have like worsened her symptoms and um, pain was actually radiating down because of like some neural sensitivity So treatment wise, um, I did a lot of education on like her likelihood of the con um on the condition, some postural awareness or how she should like avoid static posture while she, um and during her activities. Um activity modification, so she play like tennis and then backhand swing there's a lot of like 
a deduction so I told her to limit on that and also overheat and also consider modifying her sleeping position so now sleeping on the left side compresses and it um, wasn't the symptoms so I told her maybe can consider sleeping on the right side and then it can have like a pillow supported and actually she felt that the symptoms actually improves and um, for exercises wise we work on like her cervical thoracic mobility we work on like rotator cuff strengthening um, so we started with like isometrics first then prone, um, follow up with like isotonic we work on like her deep neck flexor and some scapular control exercises um, we also did cervical joint mobilization some release of the rotator cuff and this was something new so I went to research a little bit on it so I also tried um, a suprascapular nerve glide but because I just gave her on the fourth session so I'm not sure about that was the outcome and we also did um, dry kneeling of her upper traps and her infraspinatus and also the teres minor so her teres minor was actually very tense even though that area was just a little bit sensitive um, I suspect it could be due to the weakness of the external rotator so the teres minor was actually um, serious minor and, uh, and her serratus anterior was actually kicking in a lot to assist with the external rotation so even surrounding area was also very tense yep, so um, I've actually discussed with Miss C so we actually considered on like a outward referrals um, going back to the auto but she actually prefers to adopt like a wait and see approach given that she has actually showed a lot of improvement and um, her pain has actually reduced so um, what I've read was that ultrasound guided injections can also aid in the diagnosis as well as so apart from diagnosis can also aid in um, therapeutic relief to confirm the diagnosis if and so far there's actually no definitive like physio protocols and so this actually highlights like a huge clinical gap and there's also no RCT comparing on like different modalities or even different exercises so what works for um, this condition and for future con for future sessions, I might actually consider using um tens just for pain like pain modulation, and also monitor like conservative approach for like any uh, muscle atrophy. Yeah, some of the, my references. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, before before we go to Q and A, my buddy over there says he wants to book a therapy. A treatment session with you. The moment you walk in front, he says, I want to book. So. Thank you. Orchard, Orchard session, please. please yes, I'm based in Orchard. Okay. My boyfriend's here. Yes, I'm working there. For, it's for work, it's for I'm legit purposes, bro, bro. Bro, bro, bro. His biceps bigger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any questions? Any questions? Serious questions? She's based in Orchard. Okay, if, they, if there's a question you're asking, so yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Sorry, I'm Hukun from EFJ. Can I just ask what would be your outcome measure? What are all your outcome measures? Um, so currently, uh, so actually I have, like my our clinic, we use like Kinven strength report, uh, strength testing. So at the start of the session, actually on the second session, I actually measured her strength, like um, like her abduction strength and the external rotation strength. And recently, because I understand she has a follow-up with the doctors, so we actually re-measured on the fourth session. And actually there was an improvement in her strength because there was also reduction in the pain. So at least I could track like her strength increase. There was a strength increment actually. So patient was actually satisfied with um her strength report and actually there's also a something that I could like actually show to the doctors lah. And I think pain score is also one. And also seeing like the scapula like the scapular control when she does the exercises. So I think um, objectively why we were using the we will use the Kinban report. So for patient perspective, maybe be pain and also like satisfaction into going back into her activities like maybe her Pilates classes. Mm. Okay. Any more questions? Any more? Behind? No? All good? Okay, thank you, Ines, thank you. Thank you. Okay, before I bring up the next resident.